pretty, um, pretty clear. Uh, it, the words now are reflect. Now, I have had some feedback that that's still too strong. Um, I'd like to um, canvas a way forward here, um, and I'd like maybe to just open the discussion up um, because I think this is maybe the only sticking point in, in this document. Uh, but I, I think uh, we can um, get, land the right words here. Personally, I've, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with reflect, but I've had some other thoughts and after discussions with the officers, that's very much, uh, and thank you, Oliver, to reflect, you only get to look back once the project is built, and that's a little bit dangerous, because if you are not, um, not engaged uh, through the process, um, your only test is at the end. Um, so there is a risk in using reflect, but uh, before I come to the words that I might suggest if they do need to change, um, I'm, I'd like to hear from uh, Councillor Lee and um, Members Namani and Taipati. Okay, thank you, Councillor Darby. And if that is the only issue that people are concerned about, I'll take Councillor Casey, who had her hand up, and give Councillor Lee a chance to gather his thoughts and Member Taipati, and then we'll go from there. Councillor okay, Casey. A couple of questions that just arose from my reread re re of it. Uh, the first was the green, the five-star green buildings. There's two a year. Are council? Are we? Are we? Are we doing that? Are we green starting our buildings? Five starting our buildings. That measure relates to new build. Uh, so we, so we have um, uh, with the interiors of of, of uh, one three five Albert Street, but that doesn't count as it's not a not a new build under this measure. So um, that's an example of one of those where. The, as I mentioned, there are many other very interesting and exciting measures alongside the ones that are highlighted here, which are, which are good to delve into. But the, um, uh, the feeling that we had was that measuring the new build, given the extent of new build that there is in the city centre, was actually a really good way of, um, of, uh, of demonstrating whether, you know, the direction of travel. And my second question just relates to the city centre residents association who were an integral part of mm -hmm. this document. All councillors received an email to say that both members had resigned from the city centre advisory panel. Are they being replaced, or is there a, we don't have any reasons for that? Uh, no, I, I don't know the personal reasons for that. I wasn't um, uh, I was informed of that by uh, city centre advisory board chair Kate Healy. They will, of course, be replaced. The the input of residents on that on that board is is, is really has been very strong and positive, and they've they've actually helped to shape the, um, uh, the measures here. Uh, they made a great contribution. I think our understanding, Councillor Casey, because um, Councillor Darby and I asked the same <coughs> question, was that those two members have actually resigned from the Residents Association so they can no longer represent the Residents Association. So it'll be up to the Residents Association to nominate and replace. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. well, Councillor Lee, did you wish to comment on the Chiakaranga principles? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the Te Aranga design principles properly called Maori landscape strategy um, is just one aspect of this. So I'd rather deal with the changes in context rather than pick out just one aspect of them because they're all inter interconnected. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I welcome um, this review uh, because this is an accountability report uh, or an accountability process. But I think it's important for us when we, we look at these numbers to bear in mind what is our responsibility and what is the responsibility of other government agencies and indeed what is the responsibility of business and the market, the world market even. Um, Obviously, we have, um, we are in control by and large of what we do and what we're accountable for, but not necessarily for others, and especially uh, matters relating to the global market. And uh, all these um, metrics are, uh, if you like, muddled up. And so, Thanks, mate. who is responsible for what? Is, is, is not clear. If things are good, then I'm sure we'll bask in the reflected glory. 
of um, commercial prosperity and all the rest of it, um, and where things are bad, one imagines that well, we can explain that it's got nothing to do with us. So I don't think that is satisfactory in an accountability document such as this, and therefore I would like a more thoroughgoing review of how we account for what and why. Now just get taking, going through the document, um, there are a number of, of things that we are not responsible for, retail, success, and so on, but the number and size of play spaces is something that we are responsible for, and that has been deleted. Um, I, I'd like more thought around that. Um, the other um, important uh, aspect of inner city living and quality of life is crime and graffiti, and obviously the police are responsible for crime, not us, but when it comes to graffiti, I think we certainly do have a, a responsibility, um, especially on graffiti on public buildings, and um, I would r rather see rather than the percentage of assets that are graffiti free in the city centre uh, is m more than 90% by 2020, I would like, that's fine in itself, I would like some commitment that gra graffiti from public buildings is removed within 24 hours, that's our commitment. That's meaningful, that's being accountable. Um, Perhaps said that there needs to be some commitment regarding solving the problem of homelessness in the inner city. Um, the, the one, the, the one um, commitment that I strongly object to its, remo its removal is the increase in the percentage of area in the city centre that has been scheduled. Um, for, in regard for historic heritage, scheduled historic heritage places. That's been removed. I, I would like to see that put, put back in. And that flows on to the aforesaid Te Aranga principles. And I think what we're talking about is the Te Aranga Maori Cultural Landscape Strategy. And I think recently we've seen an example of that in full cry in regard to the Great War uh, Centenary Memorial designs and public reaction to that. Uh, I have no problem with a, 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 a Maori cultural set of design principles that the Council should take into account. Uh, this particular document that we're referring to, uh, from my inquiries, not many uh, members of the Council, indeed staff members, have really studied it. But I have to say, the document I've seen is pro probably more appropriate for the Waitangi Tribunal than as a guide for the Auckland Council. And I suppose if I were to settle on one aspect of it, I think the, the division of the Auckland community between Māori for Māori and, on the other hand, for Tauiwi, all other peoples of New Zealand. In other words, uh, Maori on one hand and everyone else on the other. And if you go to the authoritative Williams Maori Dictionary, Tauiwi, it means strange tribe, foreign race. Now I have to say, Madam Chair, that I object to the people of Auckland, native born, um, whose ancestors fought for this country, being described as tauiwi, or strangers, or anything else of that matter. And I think if we're going to be working on the design principles on that basis, we're going to get ourselves into more trouble. We've only seen the start of it, and I think we need not only to review that commitment to reflect the Te Aranga principles, but the principles themselves need to have a good, hard looking over by the members of this governing body because this is in our name and I don't want it to be in my name. Now, moving on. Okay. 
Just I, I think the aspect of encouraging families into the city centre is something that we need to reflect on. I think it's a good idea. Um, we're, we're backing away from that in terms of commitment, but I think if we're going to back away, I think we need to have a good reason why. On the other hand, we are pledging to take to give focus to children's views on how we develop this, the city centre. One may be easier, may be easy to focus on children's views, but maybe harder um, to provide family homes. And and um, just because it's hard, it's something we shouldn't get away from. One final point, I think, um, and that is air quality. And I think that clearly that is our responsibility. And all the way through, all the way through this document, we've talked about the central city, the inner city. And in this case, we don't talk about the inner city at all. We talk about air quality in the city improves. What I'm concerned about is that this means that rather than focusing on the main cause of pollution, the um, main impact on air quality in the city centre, um, which is vehicle emissions, diesel emissions and so on, moves to the broader city where staff are focused on household open fires. Now, I, I, I understand if you could shut down all the open fires out, out in the suburbs, you could, especially in winter, improve air quality. But it will do nothing for the city centre. Okay. Council, I think... I, so I think we need to put the word city time. centre. We're moving out Thank of you. what we're doing. I'll leave it at that, Madam Chair. Okay. So just, just a quick question, Councillor Lee. You are a member of the City Centre Integration Group and, and um, who have signed off on these. So I presume these issues were raised in that context. I beg your pardon? I presume you have already raised the issues that you're raising with us today as part of the discussion and debate at the City Centre Group, what where, city centre of which group? you are a member. City Basically Centre group. Advisory okay. Group. The City Centre Advisory Group, of yeah, which that's, you are that's a for, member. Essentially for, for businesses and, and, and NGOs, Madam Chair, um, it's an advisory group. And yes, I am a member, and I don't believe this has come up in detail. There was a great row about the Freiburg place where the Waitamata local board's wishes were overruled by the City Centre Advisory Board and staff, but I was briefed on this yesterday morning about this time, or a bit later, and so um, I'm, I'm just responding to what I've been briefed on, Madam Chair, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Just really, to be honest, I was actually keen to move um, the A and B, uh, and I still am. Uh, I've taken on board uh, Councillor Darby's comments, and uh, I don't disagree um, that the term reflect uh, can be interpreted uh, in a number of ways. Uh, personally, I would have rather have seen shall incorporate, but I'm assuming that would be a lot more uh, harder uh, than reflect. I am interested in the words um, that Councillor Darby is going to propose, because he hasn't said that yet. Um, but um, again, as the, um, the, the document is, uh, I'm happy to move A and B. Okay. A and B moved. If there's a second for that, Councillor Darby's happy to second as is, unless there's a great outpouring of change, that may well be it. I've got Councillor Watson, Councillor Quacks. Um, Councillor Darby, Councillor Wood. Councillor yeah. Watson. Thank, thank you. Uh, and, uh, well, yes, a lot of very uh, highly desirable and ambitious outcomes sought there. I, I just wonder if, if you could just, I, I've tried to find it, and it may be staring me in the face, but what's the exact boundaries of the city city centre that we're considering? considering? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. The, um, 
The boundaries are generally the motorway and the waterfront. So it's, um, uh, however, that said, some of the boundaries that are measurable don't always exactly align to those. So uh, while that is the area that we refer to as the city centre, uh, within the report I've, um, I've referenced where, uh, where there is some, um, uh, the, where the measures do either extend beyond or, or have to sit within. So there are a number of examples of that. Okay, so, so for instance in, in outcome eight where we're um, seeking you know, exceptional natural environment,